Matera, one of the world's oldest continuously inhabited cities, located on a rocky outcrop in the region of Basilicata, in the south of Italy. A city that embodies the spirit of a bygone era and the promise of a bright future. Matera used to be Italy's biggest chain, but now it is considered to be one of its most beautiful villages and even declared a World Heritage Site by UNESCO. I have spent three days in Matera and I was completely in awe with everything this magical place had to offer. So here are my 10 favorite best things to do in Matera. To get a good idea of Matera's history and how its citizens used to live in the caves, you should first visit the cave house. Once you enter the cave and see how people used to live, you start to comprehend why this town became La Vergogna Nazionale, the disgrace of the nation. Until 1952, Matera stayed under the radar and its citizens lived in grottos originally intended as animal stalls. They shared these caves with dogs, sheep, goats, pigs and donkeys. There was no running water, no electricity or toilet. Malaria and dysentery were widespread diseases. This is exactly what you get to see when visiting a typical cave house. A cave filled with furniture, often with a private well and space for animals. All together in one area. To be honest, it was more spacious than I thought, but never in my life would I want to live that way. Matera's secret was revealed when Carlo Levi, an Italian artist, painter and author, published his book Christ Stopped at Eboli in 1945. Levi has described the situation in Matera. Matera became the shame of Italy and after the Prime Minister of Italy gave Matera a visit, the entire population of the Sassi got relocated and the Sassi got cleaned and renovated. Cave dwellings became boutique and luxury hotels, guest houses, fancy restaurants, skewed bars and shops. Which brings me to my next point. When visiting Matera, you should definitely stay in a cave. I stayed at Le Luminarie Sassi, at the edge of the Sasso Cafe Oso. My little cave apartment had the most elegant interior with a large comfortable bed, including a spectacular headboard with a light installation. The kitchen was well equipped and its walls decorated with the most beautiful tiles. I absolutely adored the bathroom with a cutout shower in the rocks. Something that should not be missing from your things to do in Matera list are the several amazing viewpoints spread all over the town. Every Belvedere shows another awe-inspiring perspective from the dreamy town and all its cave dwellings. Belvedere Piazza Pascoli can be found at the Piazzetta Pascoli, next to the Musea Nazionale di Matera and offers views of the Sasso Caveoso and the Chiesa Rupestre di Santa Maria di Idris. Belvedere Luigi Guericchio, detto dei tre archi, was definitely one of my favorite Belvederes. I enjoyed it mostly early in the morning when the sun is rising from behind the Duomo, or in the afternoon when the sun lights up the entire Sasso Barisano. It is located at the Piazza Vittorio Veneto. The official lookout point of Belvedere San Pietro Barisano is situated on the left side of the tower of the Chiesa di San Pietro Barisano, but I love the view from the right side of the church tower much more. It is a little harder to find within the maze of all the narrow alleys and steps, which is probably the reason why I often found myself alone there. It seems that most people stay in like the part where there are shops and where there are like the most known viewpoints because in the small streets there are not that many tourists. I'm basically most of the time exploring on my own and I can take as many pictures as I want honestly without any disturbance. It's great, I mean, look, I am at this viewpoint, and okay, it's not an official one, but there's no one here. And it's a magnificent view. It's absolutely breathtaking. And they're really missing out on something. Convento di Sant'Agostino has probably the most spectacular view of all. Not only are you able to see the Gravina Canyon, but also the hill with the two Sassi and the Duomo on top. 
One of my favorite things to do in Matera is definitely just wandering around the cobbled alleys and getting lost. Most people stayed in the main streets. Once I took a side alley, I often found myself alone. That is how you discover all the amazing views and cute little corners. There is nothing better than strolling around the sassy districts. It often gave me the feeling as if I was transported into a different century. No wonder they chose Matera as a filming location for The Passion of the Christ and Ben-Hur. Matera still maintains its historic religious and popular traditions. The exceptional quantity of stone-built and rock churches, Chiese Rupestri, historically supports the population's intense religion. So of course, visiting churches is one of Matera's top activities. The biggest Rupestrian church in the Sassi is Chiesa di San Pietro Parisano. Other important ones are Santa Maria de Idris and the Church of Santa Lucia alle Malve, which are located next to each other on top of Montirone's rocky spur. Cathedrale di Maria Santissima della Bruna e Santo Estacchio, also known as the Duomo, is perched on top of the hill in the center of the town and mostly visible from everywhere in Matera. It was built in the 13th century and has a magnificent bell tower and ornate interior decorations. Matera has countless churches to visit, so it is impossible to visit them all in just a few days. But these are some other churches I found beautiful as well. The Chiesa del Purcatorio, Chiesa di San Francesco d'Assisi, and Chiesa di San Giovanni Battista. Visiting the Palombaro Lungo is one of the most surprising things to do in Matera. It is the biggest cistern of the town. It dates back to the 16th century and is a man-made excavation of many pre-existing caves combined together. It can contain 5 million liters of water, being 16 meters deep and 15 meters long. When the public fountains were dry, people could withdraw water from the cistern using aluminium buckets through a well in the square. Unfortunately, you cannot find a well anymore at Piazza Vittorio Veneto because it was destroyed in 1927. The mouths of the well are still visible in the ceiling. You can walk through the cistern on a boardwalk suspended over the water. I found it pretty impressive and I was glad I visited the place. If you are looking for something completely different to do in Matera, then you should hike the Gravina Canyon at the Parco della Murgia Materana. It's hiking time, guys. I am currently at Parco della Murgia Materana. And it is a hike that goes all the way down to the river over there. I don't know if you can see it because it's pretty dark down there. There's a hanging bridge that you can cross. And then it goes all the way up to the caves on the other side. You have to cross the Ponte Tibetano della Gravina, a fun wobbly hanging bridge to walk all the way up to some historic caves and fantastic views. Oh God, the only way is up, baby, for you and me now. <laughs> God, it's tough.
Matera is always looking gorgeous, but seeing Matera in the light of sunrise and sunset is absolutely magical. Belvedere Luigi Guaricchio Detto dei Treiarchi was my favorite place to see the sunrise. But sunset is even better. Day trip tourists are leaving and the town turns pink and takes on a mystical aura. The street lanterns go on and the town starts to twinkle. The best places to experience sunset were Convento di Sant'Agostino and Belvedere San Pietro Barisano. Since we are in Italy, it goes without saying that you need to indulge in the local food and drinks. Matera's food scene is sure to tantalize your taste buds. Indulge in the local specialty focaccia di Matera, a soft and fluffy bread that is baked to perfection and don't forget aperitivo. Last but not least, walking through the Sassi of Matera at night is a truly magical experience. The ancient stone dwellings are lit by the soft glow of lanterns, casting a warm, mysterious light on the narrow streets and alleys. The sound of shuffling footsteps echoes off the walls. As you wander through the maze of houses and courtyards, you'll be transported back in time. So come explore the Sassi of Matera and let yourself be captivated by the magic of this ancient city. These were my 10 favorite best things to do in Matera. More details and information about where to stay you can always find in the video description below. I hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks for watching!